Hi booktube, my name is Juan, I am just one reader, and in this video I will be discussing A Confederacy of Dunces, written by John Kennedy Toole. The book was published in 1980, 11 years after the author had committed suicide. Just by bringing up the topic of suicide right now, you might anticipate the book to be dreary or dark. But let me tell you, this is by far my favorite, favorite book that I have read this year so far. And in all honesty, I think it will be a very tough one to top. It is just wonderful. It is perhaps the funniest book that I have ever read, making me sometimes belly laugh so hard people would ask me, are you okay? Now, because of the COVID pandemic, I read this book almost entirely indoors, but I know that if I had read this outside in public, it would have been quite awkward. This is a book that made me so joyful and happy, I even felt kind of ashamed or guilty. I know that, for example, if I had read this on the subway, I probably would have felt quite guilty for having this delightful gem all to myself, not sharing it with others around me. It's also one of the saddest books I have ever read, if I really think about it. The novel is not exactly plot-centered. It's rather a character study on the fascinating Ignatius J. Riley probably now one of my ultimate favorite characters in all of literature. Just imagine Holden Caulfield from The Catcher in the Rye, but on steroids. Ignatius J. Riley is so morbidly obese. His obesity is actually described by someone as tacky. <laughs> he is huge, a mountain of flesh, larger than life. He is overwhelming in every possible way, annoying, frustrating, filled with hatred and contempt for everyone and everything. Ignatius hates the modern world. He's obsessed with past times and philosophy. He lives a very empty life. He is insulting, offensive, but also feels offended by everyone. He's 30 years old and depends completely from the Oedipal link with his mother. He writes his thoughts down in the hope of leaving a legacy and creating a work of genius, when in reality it's all a bunch of nonsense, the words of a lunatic. Ignatius sometimes seems intelligent and clever, but really he isn't. He's just verbose and arrogant, petulant and condescending, detached from reality in an almost psychotic way. He's a snob, and he's also a disgusting waste of space. He's just all around not a nice human being. I also love him dearly. I love him so, so, so very dearly. Actually, never has a character become an instant favorite, not like this. The way the author gives voice to Ignatius, I could not help but to fall in love with him. I found him charming and wonderful in a unique way. He's like a train wreck of a person, and as a reader, you simply cannot look away. But... The character of Ignatius is not the only thing this novel has to offer, no, 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 no. There are many other characters, all of them funny and charming and interesting in their own way, and you will love following them around. For example, I just could not stop laughing at the poor Darlene, the stripper who creates a one-woman strip show parody of Gone with the Wind together with her pet cockatoo. <laughs> Ignatius' mother is also herself a vivid, interesting character that makes you wonder about her life and the origins of her son. The writing in A Confederacy of Dunces is simply superb. It's so refreshing, vibrant, and specific that I know I will come back to it later just to pay more attention to its construction. It is also one of those books that simply it could not be adapted. It, it doesn't feel like something that could be just adapted as a movie or as a TV show. Not quite. 
I am aware that there have been some adaptations uh, to the theater, but I would never see any adaptation of A Confederacy of, Dun of Dunces. The book just feels so unique in tone, so specific, like it exists in its very own world. The only actor that I can sort of see in the role of Ignatius is the great Philip Seymour Hoffman, and he's not around anymore. So, why bother? Now, even though this is a comedic masterpiece, you can read it today in 2021 and feel its tragic reverberations. In our postmodern world, in which so many things feel like they have gone mad, the character of Ignatius takes on a new meaning. How many Ignatiuses have we encountered online, or maybe in real life? Isn't the world now promoting these new forms of the so-called postmodern psychopathologies? According to contemporary psychoanalysis, which is my field, mental health is measured or defined by the capacity to link thoughts and affects, subject and objects, in order to generate new creativity. Ignatius, and pretty much everything else in the novel, represent the exact opposite, what the great psychoanalyst Wilfred Bion described as the psychotic part of the personality, which attacks realization and thought, and instead promotes regression and paranoid schizoid mechanisms. Many say and I might agree that even though we're living in the best era of humanity, there is a constant threat to destroy the mind and obliterate freedom and subjectivity. So those are my thoughts on A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole, winner of the Pulitzer Prize, but most importantly to me, the best book that I have read so far in 2021 and probably the best one that I will have read at the end of the year. What a joyful, joyous celebration of writing. What a great character. What, what a colorful, charming example of great writing. Um, just what a great writer all around. I hope you enjoy this book as much as I did. It's the most delicious experience you can imagine, and I would love to share it with you. If you have read it, please leave a comment and share your thoughts. And if this video has convinced you to try it out, let me know. Have a wonderful day.